There is this Bloomberg article that came out on January 15 by the reliable leaker Mark Gurman, in which he talks about a bunch of stuff that he says Apple is going to launch in the near future. Specifically, he is talking about a redesigned iMac, featuring a Pro Display XDR-like design. Actually, that reminds me of something. In the article, he briefly mentions not one, but two Mac Pros. The first one should keep the same cheese grader design, and apparently it may not have Apple Silicon. But what I am more interested in is the second one. In his own words, the second version will use Apple's own processors and be less than half the size of the current Mac Pro. The design will feature a mostly aluminum exterior and could invoke nostalgia for the Power Mac G4 Cube. This is very strange. Anyways, as usual, I made a concept. But this isn't what I want to discuss now. Let's try to understand what the report means and what will this thing be. So, he says that for the first model, the one with the old design, Apple could use Intel chips again. And this just doesn't make sense to me. The transition to Apple Silicon only makes sense if it affects their entire lineup, from the cheapest MacBook to the Mac Pro. During the transition announcement, they said that they had other Intel Macs ready to ship, and ship they were. But could it be that they never planned to bring Apple Silicon to the Mac Pro as well? Is Apple Silicon just not powerful enough for that? No! The Apple Silicon transition was not a last minute decision. It's been years in the making. The idea that they somehow figured out too late that Apple Silicon just wasn't enough for the high-end market they just entered doesn't make sense. And if the Mac Pro remained with Intel, they would have to make basically twice as many macOS versions. All of this just for this one very nice Mac. From the economic point of view, it would make way more sense for them to simply leave the ultra-professional market. I guess it's possible that they somehow have this last Intel Mac Pro ready to ship and the Apple Silicon Mac Pro will come later. But I have absolutely no idea who would ever want to invest in such an expensive machine that will very quickly get obsolete. It just makes no sense. But the Intel iMac releasing after the transition announcement didn't make sense either. So I don't know, we'll see. Now, let's address the not so giant elephant in the room. What even is this thing? At first it could seem obvious, Apple Silicon needs far more power efficient, it needs way less cooling, so this smaller Mac Pro that will invoke nostalgia for the G4 Cube, imagine if that was the title of this video, will just be the natural evolution of the Mac Pro, and this new cubic form factor will replace the current one. It makes sense, right? Of course not! What is the point of creating a completely new design after ignoring the Mac Pro for like 6 years to then discard that same design after just a couple of years? The only semi-logical reason for doing such a thing I could think of is they want to compare the new, smaller Mac Pro with the older model on stage and say, see, it's way smaller and it's all thanks to Apple Silicon. And that wouldn't have the same effect if their last Mac Pro to compare it to was this. But would you ever do all this mess just to say one line during the presentation? I refuse to believe that this design just wasn't made with Apple Silicon in mind. Today I will waste mountains of R&D money to create an extremely expensive product that will inherently sell way less than everything else just to completely discard all of this in 2-3 to three years. And there is also the fact that the current Mac Pro is marketed towards real professionals who need really powerful machines they can upgrade over time and the lack of upgradability seems to be a problem from Apple Silicon in general, but creating an even smaller computer will probably just make everything worse. And one of the main selling points of the current Mac Pro is the upgradability. They already tried to replace a no-nonsense design for a more compact but not user-upgradable one, and it didn't go well. Why would they make the same mistake twice? So, 
I don't think this will replace the Mac Pro. An Apple Silicon Mac Pro will eventually come, but it will keep the same design. This will basically be a cheaper Mac Pro that I really hope they won't call Mac Pro Mini because that sounds ridiculous. And if there is one Mac that this cube will replace, I think it's the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini was born with a target in mind that doesn't exist anymore because it was meant to be the cheap entry-level Mac to browse the internet. But we all use smartphones for that nowadays. I mean, they tried to make it more useful for the modern world and modern users. It became more powerful and expensive, but it still doesn't include a dedicated GPU. This is pointless, for me at least. The only logical target for this thing to aim at is the prosumer market, because for the huge companies that buy those extremely expensive workstations, this would be a significant downgrade. But for the consumer market, it would be too overkill. And yes, they could just slap an M1X or whatever in the Mac Mini and call it a day. But we have already seen that the Apple Silicon is a bit wasted for the design. There's a lot of empty space. They need to change its design regardless. And the two options in this case are, they either make it smaller or they make it more useful by giving it some upgradeability. Now what do you think would make more sense for the prosumer market? The second one of course, but it's Apple we are talking about. It's never this easy to predict their moves. I guess only time will tell. If you like this video you can help the channel grow by subscribing and sharing it. Ciao!